Hey guys, it's Pineapple, and yesterday obviously was a very big day for the uh, the, the trader theory community. Uh, spoilers for My Hero Academia chapter 336. If you want to go over our full summary of that chapter, you can watch our last video, obviously. But spoilers for chapter 336, it was revealed that Aoyama is indeed the UA trader. And right before the reveal, uh, just we, we did get leaks early in the day, but I was starting to just think about previous scenes of Aoyama, right? And pretty much just going over the evidence again. And there was always always this one scene from the provisional license exam that really really stood out to me as being weird and I could never figure out like what the reason behind it was you know like what what was the purpose behind that scene what was it hinting at what was going on there and maybe it's just because I don't really like the provisional license exam like I kind of skip it on rereads and rewatches that I've never gotten this until now but yesterday I had a massive brain blast it ended up telling my whole Twitter about it uh, and it got got a lot of traction on there so I feel like you know just be fair to share it with you guys here of course too so I'm gonna go over it real quick and tell you how yesterday I realized how all along Aoyama's hero name has been a hint to him being the UA trader, and how a very specific scene in the provisional license exam reinforces this clue 100%, and finally makes sense while proving just how much of a master whore he is at weaving this plot line. So again, here's a relevance behind I Cannot Stop Twinkling being Aoyama's hero name. Now in the provisional license exam, Ida is running around looking for any remaining class 1A students so he can help them as the class rep. From there we see that Aoyama is hiding alone and Ida approaches him. Now the first thing that I want you to notice is that Aoyama is hiding alone here and he laughs at Ida saying that it's funny that he's looking for everyone because they might have all passed already. So that's a very important thing to notice. He thinks everyone else in his class might have passed already and he's sitting alone by himself. In this little conversation between Ida and Aoyama, Ida mentions the shape of his dream here, where he comments that being useful to others and being able to save others and pretty much doing the things that his brother would do are the shape of his dream. And that gets a reaction out of Aoyama where we can't see his eyes. Now, if you know me, whenever we can't see Aoyama's eyes, I think it's because he's lying or thinking of his traitorness, especially considering he's always looking at the camera and looking right at us with his eyes twinkling and whatnot. So when his eyes are hidden, it's kind of something that you are supposed to take notice of, in my opinion. So because of Ida talking about the shape of his dream, Aoyama thinks of the shape of his own dream. And if you've been following my specific brand of the Aoyama trader theory, you know that I think Aoyama wanted to become a hero, but didn't have a quirk and his family asked All For One to give him a quirk to make him equal to the other kids like All For One did for Deku, something that was confirmed in this recent chapter. So keep in mind that shape of my dream line because it's going to come back around in a second. Now after a little bit of the episode goes by, we cut back to Aoyama and Ida and here we have Aoyama trying to convince Ida that they can't pass the exam. Notice again here that when he's saying that, no eyes are visible. And I've had a lot of people point out in my Twitter thread that he also says there are two of us, which is a little suspicious considering people think that there are two traitors, but I honestly, again, don't think that Hagakude is really involved, and it is just Aoyama. But who knows, because there is still some things that don't really add up with her. But the larger thing to take away here, again, is that Aoyama is trying to convince Ida that there's no way that they can pass while his eyes aren't visible, which again, for me, is a sign of something shady going on. And this is bringing me to my larger point. It's roughly at this point in the episode where we find out how many slots are left available. With 9 students left and only 10 slots available, Aoyama starts to think about the shape of his dream again, and suddenly, he drops to the ground and does a self-sacrificial play. Now for a lot of people, this was actually something that was a big piece of evidence against Aoyama potentially being the traitor, because this honestly comes off as very heroic at first, and it does fit the whole shape of his dream thing if he does want to be a hero. But if you notice in the scene, Ida questions just what Aoyama wants to be equal to when Aoyama is talking about wanting to be equal. Like Horikoshi really emphasizes the fact that it doesn't add up to Ida, and I want that to be something that you kind of notice, that when something is supposed to kind of just go over the radar or go under the radar, Horikoshi Horikoshi makes sure that the person that hears it or the person that is there to kind of take note of it isn't exactly the brightest, right? Or, or is the kind of person that is just going to instantly trust that character and not call out or instantly assume that something isn't adding up and they're lying, right? They're, they're more likely to just be confused and ask a question later or just be confused in a moment and let it go. So here Ida, when something isn't really adding up to him and Aoyama's talking about wanting to be equal to others, and you know, he's already equal to others technically because he has a quirk and he's a hero, a smarter person would be like, well, what does he mean that he's not equal to others, right? Like maybe Deku would be able to figure that out. But, and maybe the audience, us, right? Like we kind of ended up figuring out in the Aoyama trader theory 
uh, the quirk exchange theory video that that ended up meaning that he wanted to be equal to people with quirks because he ended up being born quirkless. And the tragedy of Aoyama's situation we know is that he wants to be a hero and that he wants to be equal to everyone, that he wants to have a quirk and do all that stuff, but he's forced because of All for One and because of his parents to spy and to pretty much act in the opposite way and be a villain in secret. So if that's all the case, which we now know that it is, why does Aoyama shoot the laser in the air? Even Ida is really confused about why he does it. Here, this moment is really genius because it makes him seem heroic, but actually, I believe this moment is Aoyama realizing that he actually has a way out of being all for one spy. That he finally has a way out of the entire situation. And how is that? Think about it. He can fail. That's why he was hiding by himself when Ida approached him in the first place. He never intended to pass the exam at all. But why do I think this? Surely that can't be the only reason. Because once it seems like Aoyama is going to get just that, a heroic reason to sacrifice himself and fail, and a perfect reason to take a step away from the path that he's been on so far with the fellow students, what happens? Individually, all the different members of the class step in and start saving Aoyama and Ida and start taking out all the random, you know, not villains, but other students, and they all start securing those spots and making it seem like, obviously, there's no way that Aoyama and Ida are going to have, you know, a chance to fail now as long as they put in a minimal effort now that the whole class is there. And if Aoyama is aiming to fail here, that means that Class 1A ruins it. And how does he react? Well, look at it yourself anger. And that reaction only makes sense if he wanted to fail. Aoyama wanted out, and Class 1A took away his only opportunity to get out. That's why he reacts this way. It never made sense to me before, but if he's truly an unwilling spy who's being forced to do it because he was given a quirk, this is the perfect opportunity to leave, and 1A took it away. I think it also perfectly mirrors how Deku tried to go the I will sacrifice myself for others route in the recent villain hunt arc, and when everyone came to save him, even though he was reluctant, he wasn't angry at them. But Aoyama, who wants to be framed as parallel to Deku, did, which narratively is a very big hint that something is off of his character. And finally, looping around to the main topic of the whole video, which is how, why is Aoyama named I Cannot Stop Twinkling, and how is that a hint to him being the traitor, plus why we're talking about this scene from the provisional license exam in the first place, well, I believe that his name, I Cannot Stop Twinkling, is literally a hint to him being forced to be there. He was given this quirk and he cannot stop using it and keeping it and spying for all for one. And in this scene here in the provisional license exam, he literally reaffirms it himself. Assuming this is all true, this statement here, well, that means my twinkle won't stop, huh? With the eye shaded, clearly gives us the impression that he's kind of unhappy about the fact that his twinkle won't stop because he has to keep going. He cannot stop twinkling. So the long and short version is I think that Aoyama's hero name was a hint to us and everyone paying attention that he's being forced to not only keep his quirk, but continue as a hero at UA for the sake of paying back all for one for giving him his quirk. He literally cannot stop twinkling. If he does, he'll probably start exploding. So that is why I believe that Aoyama's name, I Cannot Stop Twinkling, has been a hint this entire time to him being the traitor, and it's kind of been like a cry for help, I guess, or it's maybe a cheeky little thing from Hori to us as a kind of hint for us to pick up on that we never really did, but I finally pieced together that this provisional license exam clip kind of reaffirms that and kind of exposes that for us and, and shows us that that's exactly what that means by him saying, I guess I cannot stop twinkling now, or you know, something to that effect. And of the chapter coming this week, I mean, it's gonna be really interesting to see how all the dialogue and all the discourse about how, you know, everything has just been laid out so far goes. So make sure to join in. I'll see you guys there on Twitter. I'll see you guys there in my comment section. I'll make sure we talk about it this Sunday. I'm really, really excited. We're right. It's awesome. And yeah, now let's move on to Dad for One.